term aneurysm really means dilatation of a segment of an artery. It is actually a very gradual process. It occurs really in elderly people, it does not really occur in young people. It is probably a process of aging as well as something else that makes our arteries weak. So essentially the artery which are really tube like structures, they are really like pipes after all. Arteries are pipes that carry blood from the heart to various parts of the body. The pipe instead of being like a tube becomes like a balloon because the artery weakens. So this is an aneurysm. Naturally when anything becomes like a balloon and it gets weak over the years, it gets weaker and weaker and eventually it can rupture. If it ruptures, it is fatal. There is uh, no way of, no chance of survival once it ruptures. So that is the reason why aneurysm should be detected before the catastrophe happens so that we can treat them. So. Diagnosis is really simple. Of course, if it is a large aneurysm, one can actually feel it when one examines the belly of a person. The most common set of aneurysm is by the way the abdominal aorta, that is the most common. This should not be mistaken for brain aneurysms which have no relation to this by the way. These are called aortic aneurysms and if it is big size one can diagnose just by feeling, examining the patient. Otherwise in most people the best way to diagnose is by a simple ultrasound of the abdomen also called sonogram. It takes about probably 5 to 7 minutes to do the test. It is non-invasive, very simple. Anyone who is above the age of 65 or 70 uh, should have it done. Now in fact, the, in fact the Medicare even pays for screening of the aneurysm. Uh, someone who is above 70 who has history of smoking. The other very important aspect is people whose family have had aneurysms. If a uh, person's brother, sister or parents have had aneurysms, we do see that there is a tendency in the family to develop aneurysms. So that is another strong reason to uh, do the screening or at least testing for these patients. The treatment is obviously taking the weak part out and replacing it with an artificial tube. That is a conventional treatment and has been done for the past 50 or 60 years. But it is certainly a big operation, it's one of the biggest operations we, we do and we used to do also. Uh, the operation takes about at least 4 to 5 hours or longer, hospital stays about 7 to 10 days and uh, the patient's convalescence which means even after going from the hospital going home they are still very weak and they get their strength back, the full recovery takes about 4 to 6 weeks. Now we have a new treatment like anything else in medicine. There is a lot of uh, shift because of technology to what we call as minimally invasive treatment. So we can do that for aneurysms, uh, it is called endovascular treatment or also called putting a stent graft. Without opening the abdomen now, we can actually put a graft inside the aneurysm and this is called stent grafting and this can be done under spinal anesthesia. The patients go home within 24 hours and it is just a phenomenal change in the degree of the stress to the patient. It is amazing that we now can offer this patient who are very sick who could not otherwise be operated upon. So. This is supposed to be permanent. Obviously, it is a new treatment the way we have to monitor everybody that we do the stent grafting. Every six months we do CAT scan and follow them lifelong because uh, it was only approved in the United States by FDA in 2000. So this is only 7 years old, but worldwide as you know Europe and other parts of the rest of the world, I would say they have been doing for 10 to 12 years now. Mm -hmm. They are a little bit ahead in because FDA generally does not approve any treatment until really it is well tested. So in United States it has been approved since 2000. So for 7 years we have been doing it and uh, the experience shows that it is a very good treatment.